One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. One of my favorite things about having a podcast is getting to bring people onto the show that I know are going to blow your socks off, right? <laughs> like there's times when we'll have people come onto the show and maybe it's a cold pitch where I don't really know the person and, you know, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this sounds like an incredible fit. Like, yes, yes, yes. Let's make it happen. And then there's other times where a friend will come to me and say, I've got something really good that I want to share with your audience. And I'm like, yes, tell me more. This is perfect. And that is exactly what we are talking about today because y'all have told me speaking on stage is scaring you. And when I say stage, that could mean your podcast. It could mean going live. It could mean an actual physical stage. And so I brought my good friend and speaking coach, Heather Sager, back onto the show today to give us some tips and help us out. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach you how to start, launch, and market your content with confidence. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of content creation, this is the show that will help be your time-saving shortcut. So let's get right to it, shall we? All right, Profit Podcast listeners, we have a very special guest today. It's one of my BFFs, the person that I have never met in person. Like, I'm still so upset about this, but Heather Sager, welcome Hi. to the show. <laughs> it's still, it's still mind boggling to me that that has not been a thing that's happened. <laughs> no, it's so wild. Like, I was just telling somebody the other day, one of my neighbors, we were talking about yeah, but that's not even the weirdest thing. Like I have two girlfriends that are like some of my best friends on the planet and 
we've been like besties for three years and we've never met in person other than I met Mel the one time. And so it's so crazy to me, but I love seeing your face. It makes me just so happy. So thank you for coming here on the show today. I'm fairly confident the last time I was on your show, we weren't friends yet. Like right. we, were, we were friendly, but we, I, I felt like your acquaintances, that, that was like an audition to, to figure out whether or not I was your people. And yes. I was going to yeah. cut it. In, in reflection, I guess I passed. Yes. Yes. You're actually infamous in our household now as the woman that eats the peanut butter pickle sandwiches too. Oh, yeah. So oh, you've made a mark. We're starting with that. We are <laughs> we are starting with that today, people. I'm right out of the it. gate, right <laughs> out of the gate. We have to, because- I asked Heather to come onto the show because there are so many people in this audience that really struggle to make real connections with their content. And I know, I mean, Heather's taught me so much about speaking and being a good speaker isn't good enough. Like this was the aha moment that I've had on many a times when we've chatted where you're like, Crystal, you're good. Like no one's denying that you're good but what if you could be great? And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is my come to Jesus moment. Heather just changed my life. And so I wanted to start there in really just bringing to the forefront where you see a lot of content creators and specifically podcasters really missing the mark in their content and how they can improve because everybody's listening now. They're like, oh, hang on, we're pulling up a chair. Like I'm ready, like preach to us, Heather. I'm ready to hear it today. I, well, I mean, buckle up because it's it's going to be it's going to be fun. <laughs> I, well, I think the first thing we have to think about is like think about the most well known people in any industry. So we think podcasting. You got Crystal Prophet. Right. People think uh, photography. I don't know. There's probably some world famous photographer that you follow if you're into that kind of thing. Like any niche or niche, whatever you want to call it, any industry, there's people that are very well known. And in a world when we do podcasting or are live on social or speaking on stages, it's very public facing. And when you think of those people that are really well known, the characteristic across the board is all of them have become comfortable speaking their ideas out loud. So what's interesting is that the concept that you said of I'm already a good speaker versus how much better you could be by working on that. The reality is, is if you want to be the known person, like you have to make learning how to speak and learning how to communicate in a more impactful way, you have to make that a priority. Otherwise, you cannot get into that like becoming that known person is if you just have mediocre speaking skills or uh, ones that help you get by, but if you're not super memorable or mesmerizing, that would be the good word to use here. If you're not that, people aren't going to remember you. And if they don't remember you, they're definitely not going to continue to follow you and your stuff's going to get lost in their feed pretty quickly and they're never going to come back to your show. So it's a necessity. If you want people to remember you, come back to you and ultimately buy from you, you have to up level your communication skills. Otherwise you'll blend in. Yeah, this is so good. And I know that someone's listening right now and they're like, yeah, but Heather, I don't really have that much of an audience. I don't have tens of thousands of followers. I don't have this huge group of people to talk to. And I actually, I want you to talk about, I was, I, of course I follow you on IG and you do such a great job of sharing reels and your concepts and everything, but you shared something specifically in your story the other day. And I didn't know who this uh, public speaker was, but can you talk about the empty room? So there was all these chairs and there was just an empty room of chairs. Can you talk about that? Yeah, this is so great. So first of all, if you were sitting here thinking like, oh, I don't have a big audience or oh, I can't really work on this thing yet, Heather, I still got to figure out how to get people to download my podcast or I have all these other things to do first. I'm going to say, first of all, lucky you. (laughs) Lucky, lucky you. One of the most brilliant things that I believe that I did really well when I started my business was I started showing up on Facebook lives when literally nobody was watching. And I am so grateful for that because I was in like a flubbering idiot. I didn't even know where to look in the camera lens. I developed some mild version of like word vomiting every time I would get on camera. I thought I was smiling, but I had a resting, not so nice person face. Like 
consider yourself fortunate that your audience is smaller because when you start learning how to speak on camera or may you may have experienced uh, to yourself with a podcast mic, it sounds probably not the best. <laughs> so you have essentially an open mic opportunity to practice over and over and over to get better at speaking because there is no shortcut. The only way to become a better speaker is to put in the reps. Nobody, anybody who sells you, I'm a speaking coach, y'all. I teach people how to do this for a living. Any other speaking coach that tells you like, I'm going to help you do it better and faster and take shortcuts. There is no shortcut. It's like mm-hmm. the metaphor of it. Um, a personal trainer, I can't do the pushups for you. You have to do it. So first of all, having a small audience is great because it gives you less pressure to practice. But going to that Instagram story that you mentioned, that my friend Kendra Hall, she's a professional speaker. I had the honor of hiring her years ago and now have followed her career take off. She uh, is a storyteller and she uh, very well in her stories, shared this story around how last week she was speaking to an audience and she went in and there are hundreds of chairs in this ballroom. And the first thing the meeting planner said is just a heads up, the scheduling for the event kind of went a little wonky. So there are a lot of empty chairs out there. And Kendra said, for just a brief moment, I thought, man, all these people that are not there, like this was supposed to be a huge event. This was supposed to be for thousands and it's just a couple hundred people. And she said it kind of in a comical way because that idea of just a hundred, couple hundred people, it sounds silly when you say it out loud because the reality is even if one shows up to your talk or three people download your podcast or just your sisters like me showed up your Instagram lives, that's still a person who's raising their hand to be there. And when you focus on the fact that nobody's there and nobody's listening, no one's watching, you're doing yourself and your audience a disservice because you're not focusing on the people who have raised their hand to hear from you. So there's this saying on Instagram that a lot of coaches say around that if you can't show up and serve the few followers that you have, what makes you think that you're gonna be able to serve a few thousand or a few hundred Mm -hmm. thousand You have to start small. And I think there is a huge advantage, as I said, by starting small because you're able to do things that people with larger audiences can't. You can talk to people and listen back to what they have to say. So first of all, that's your ego talking. Get over yourself and just start showing up and speaking because you're not going to probably sound that great anyways to start. This is so good. And I knew that I knew that you would have a better behind the scenes of that whole story, but I just loved the perspective of don't focus on the empty chairs. Let's focus on the people like the butts in the seats, like the people that are there, because those are the ones that matter. And I remember when I first started podcasting, someone would say, Oh, I only have 10 people listening to it. And it's like, Yeah, but what if there were 10 people at your kitchen table? Or what if there were 20 people trying to come into your house? Like all of a sudden, whoa, 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 that's a lot of people, especially especially now. Like if I had 20 people coming to my house, I'd be like, I'll be cleaning for the next three days. Like it's a whole, it'd be a whole to do to make that happen. So this is such a great reminder to not like, let's keep our egos in check and yeah. really serve the people that are showing up for us. I think but, there's also, I think there's also a tiny little bit of a fear factor that people don't actually admit or might not be thinking about. So Mm -hmm. side tangent, I grew up, I'm a singer. I don't know if you know this about me, Crystal. I I sang for years. I used to compete uh, in singing competitions. I, fun fact, uh, preliminary talent winner at Miss Oregon for singing in my 20s. Uh, (laughs) But singing, I I really enjoy singing. Am I the best singer in the world? No. Am I like going to be singing on Instagram or TikTok? Heck to the no. But I enjoy me some karaoke. Uh, The idea, though, with comes to singing, I never had problems singing in very large auditoriums because it was just a bunch of faces of people that I didn't know. And it was just Mm -hmm. like me. But whenever I was asked to speak in a really small, intimate setting, especially around friends and family, I was way more nervous. In fact, like I hate singing in front of people that I know or small audiences because it's deeply intimate. You can see Mm -hmm. other people's reactions and it's just, you feel very exposed. So thinking about this with speaking, I do think a lot of people think that, you know, if I had hundreds or thousands of people downloading or listening, there's some way in us that feels safer because what it does that if we fail or people don't like don't download it, or if we don't get feedback, we can blame it on, oh, it's just the big numbers. 
oh, we can we can chalk it up to all these other big things. But when it's small, it feels more vulnerable. It feels mm-hmm. more intimate. And yeah. so I think there's this part when you're first getting started with speaking on a podcast or on lives, when you're in that window where it still feels small, part of that is like, who's watching my stuff? Who's hearing me? Who's seeing me? And when we're obsessed with that, we're thinking on our own nerves and our own comfort. We're not really thinking about who we could be serving. So that that's just an interesting thing that I see that not a lot of people are thinking about. They think small is safe, mm-hmm. but I actually think it's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's so true when you think about those intimate connections, like there's something so powerful when somebody DMs you or somebody emails you and says, this was made just for me. You can't get that on these huge podcasts with millions of listeners. And they're like, okay, I'm like, they're like grabbing on to this one little thing. And then the host is probably thinking, I didn't mean mean that for you. I was just saying some random thing that I was throwing out there. But I know whenever I hear Heather speak, whether she's on Instagram, she's on a podcast, she's on a webinar, she's doing a workshop, even in her program, like I know that she is speaking to me because I want to be a better speaker. And actually, I wanted to bring something up because as we're recording this, like I'm in the thick of preparing to go on stage. Like I'm speaking at Podcast Movement and I have to give Heather like all the shout outs because one, I don't think I would be been able to land this without a really solid pitch. So like ladies and gentlemen, it's not just about what you're going to prepare and all the things that you're going to say in a talk. It's actually about crafting something that's going to get people's attention. So thank you, Heather. That shout out number one. I have a few, they're coming. And then the next one is the practicing piece, like really practicing because I took it to heart whenever we had that conversation, it was a few years ago now, but you were just giving me that tough love. You're like, yeah, Crystal, you're a good speaker, but let's make you great. And in one of those situations, when I think back to it, I I think that it was kind of a grappling with my ego, like, oh, you know, this is going to be a lot of work. And I don't know if I have time for this, but the beauty of it is my podcast was a lot of the work. Just keep showing up, keep creating podcast episodes, keep creating YouTube videos. And so the segues really nicely into people that are listening to this podcast and they're like, okay, Heather, I need to practice. I need to work on this. But solo podcasts are kind of weird and awkward. And I want you to talk about, you were telling me recently about a client experience where they were like, okay, I should talk like by myself on the solo podcast, but then I start talking and then I'm done. And I did, like, how do I make it longer? Like, how do I make, how do I say something that people really want to listen to? So can you talk to that for a little bit about um, how to just address that as a solo podcaster? Yeah, I think a couple things to unpack there. What I think is a really good delineation to make is when you said that it helped you understand that, hey, I'm speaking on my podcast all the time. I'm already showing up and speaking that is a form of practice. I said at the top of the show, I can't do the reps for you have to practice. I think a lot of people when they think around speaking or public speaking or crafting a talk, we all kind of put that in a container for like one day if I speak at a conference, Mm -hmm. or if I'm asked to give a presentation, or oh my goodness, I have to do a webinar, I'm going to stress out about the slide deck, whatever, we put it in another category. And I'm on a mission to help people go, dude, You talk to people all the freaking time. You should be working on your speaking skills all the freaking time because you already are. You're just not learning the skill of how to do it better. We talk to people all the time. So first of all, I always define this idea that a stage is simply a platform to share your message, whether it's a conference stage like you're doing this week, whether it's your own podcast, whether you're speaking like I am right now on someone else's podcast whether you're talking to a camera on Instagram stories, all of these are stages. And every time you're on stage as a business owner or as a professional, think about as an opportunity to practice. So knowing this, it actually empowers you to ask better questions of Google or of podcast search engines or of speaking coaches like me Mm -hmm. to say, if I'm speaking on my own solo podcast episode, I'm on a stage. How can I think about leveraging this as a quote unquote speaking opportunity? 
how would I approach a speaking opportunity? I would imagine most people who sit down to do a solo podcast, they're not thinking, how do I craft this presentation? They're yes. jotting down some random bullet points, which is a great start, better than no bullet points, but jotting some things down and then just expecting magically stories and engagement and a really great tone of voice and all of this brilliance is just going to fall out. And the idea is if you normally don't just have brilliance fall out of your mouth, if you're not naturally like quirky or coming up with little metaphors, like that's not just going to start happening. Mm -hmm. If you are normally a short winded speaker, meaning that you are more direct and less like me, I'm a very long winded speaker, which is why Crystal set this up and said, talk for just a moment about how to do <laughs> you have to know that about yourself. People who are long winded are going to need to focus on what are the points I'm trying to make. People who are short-winded are going to have to say, how do I stretch it out so that yeah. people can engage with it? So it's appetizing to them. You have to know what kind of speaker and natural communicator you are. Then we can figure out what to work on. So there are definitely some things we can talk about if you want to get into like some tips and strategies. But first and foremost, let's like, first and foremost, let's just say that bloopers like I just did are totally fine. You can make mistakes, uh, but we have to start thinking about that private podcast episode is you giving a presentation. So let's mm -hmm. think about using some really effective presentation skills for you to make more of that moment on the mic. Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. Yeah, actually, the thing that came to mind that I learned from you that was also very helpful, and it it helped like boost my confidence too. Speaking on my podcast, speaking on stages, is the idea that what we think, the words in our head, doesn't always translate out of our mouths. So, can you talk about that a little bit? Because I know you love to talk about this subject. Yes. Okay. So this is so beautiful, and I've done it a okay. I've done it a couple times. So in real time, you're hearing me think and speak, and sometimes it sounds brilliant, and sometimes it gets fumbly, and I make a mistake, and I mispronounce my words, or my brain gets three steps ahead of me, and it gets kind of fumbly. It's totally normal. We all do it. It just happens to be that I am more trained at thinking on my feet than other people. And I know how to bring my normal talking points that I want to speak on. I know how to put those on autopilot. So when I am put on the ringer, like we are right now, I don't really know what questions you're going to throw at me, but I know what we're going to talk about. Like mm -hmm. I can react to it. So what we have to understand is the way that we think, if we expect ourselves to like pop out brilliance based off our thoughts, we're really setting ourselves up to fail. And it's because the way that we think are in images and pictures and ideas and memories, and there's not really words to those. Words are what we have done in our human language around how to describe things, but the vocabulary is different than the imagery in our brains. And if we expect all of a sudden, we're just gonna have this spew of words come out and be brilliant, as I mentioned, you're not really setting yourself up for success. So what we have to do is we have to train our thinking process with our mouths. How do we sync that up a little bit more? I refer to this as something called um, practiced word vomiting or rambling exercises where you have to learn how to connect those two things together. And when you're a business owner or you're an expert in a certain topic, what you learn to do is you practice speaking about your topic in a word vomit way so that you can learn what are the things that I want to say that are brilliant? What are the things that I want to recall over and over and over again? So that when I talk about X, Y, and Z topic, I always know, Ooh, I'm going to say this great example. Whenever I'm doing guest speaking and talking to people about public speaking, I know that one of the objections of anyone I talk to is them going, yeah, that's great, but I don't speak on stages all the time. 
Hmm. So one of my go-to things that I have to address is redefining what a stage is. A stage is simply a platform to share your message. That's an example that came out of a word vomit, me rambling at some point. And I said, oh, that's good. That needs to be something on repeat. So I now have these go-to phrases that I can pull from when I am on a stage, whether it's planned or I'm reacting in an interview. You have to learn what are your go-to phrases so that you can do them on repeat. Okay. This is so good. And real fast, now that we're we're talking about this, because I know we can plug all the things at the end of this, but I want you to tell everybody, because you recently rebranded your podcast. So yeah. tell us tell us about your new podcast. And I want to hear the name of it because I love it so much. And I love it when you talk about it because it's so fun. I get to hear all the behind the scenes of naming this podcast. So I think it's so fun when you tell people about it. Yeah. So I won't say the name first. I'll, I'll let the name <laughs> drop. So I've had a podcast now for three and a half years. I started the show. I've rebranded it a couple times. And what's interesting. So I'm a speaking coach. So people typically know me as, Ooh, you have a speaking gig coming up. You need Heather in your corner. But the interesting thing is before I became a speaking coach, I was a business executive for 10 years. I worked in a management firm with uh, private practice doctors all over the world, teaching them how to have better customer patient experiences. I was damn good at what I did in the business consulting world. So what was interesting is when I started my business and I'm like, ooh, I'm the speaking coach, it kind of felt like it didn't really sum up what it is that I do. I help Mm -hmm. people leverage speaking for a business piece. Anyways, all this to say, you get to start your podcast and you have a topic that you start with and it kind of expands, right? And you get to talk about so many other things. It's one of the great parts about having a stage. So fast forward in, uh, in November of this year, I'm now three years into my podcast and I was chatting with a friend over margaritas and we were talking about who it is that I attract to my podcast and to my world and my business And I started describing the kind of person who listens to my stuff. Typically, it's a uh, well-accomplished woman who's built a very professional or successful career, whether it was in corporate or whether it was in uh, her another business like professional services. But they approach me when they're at this crossroads, when they're jumping into the online space and they're going, could I do this thing? Could I like sell digital courses? Could I do coaching? Could I have the podcast? Could I become the face of this thing and really stand out as that person to lead people? And they come to me because they see me as that person in my niche for whatever reason. Um, But they're damn good at selling and great at what they do. But the beautiful part about that person is they are so over trying to like do all these little hacks And this idea of hustling all the freaking time, the person who typically really is attracted into my world is going, you know, I'm not afraid of hard work. They've worked very hard to get what they are, but they don't want to do it all the time. They want to be available to be with their grandkids or with their kids. They want to be able to go to yoga on a weeknight and not have to worry about getting off work. They want to hustle, but like not all the time. These are the people that want just a hint of hustle in their life. And when I explain that out loud, that phrase came up. I'm like, oh, damn, that's good. Hint of hustle. Like, oh, it's just a hint of hustle. And that, I mean, spoiler, that became the name of the podcast is Hint of Hustle with Heather Sager. And where that came from was uh, I am so over the idea of people thinking that businesses have to be super hard, but I'm also Mm. over the idea of people selling this like business should be light and easy and just just do less. And while that's a great theory, any big goal, if you're ambitious, it's going to take hard work. But the secret is knowing where you actually have to like exert that energy. So the crossroads for me is I'm a huge uh, advocate around stages being that leverage point for business owners, that when you step on a stage, you can reach way more people in a shorter amount of time and have a hell of a lot more fun than trying to chase down Facebook ads or Instagram reels dancing or whatever else. I say like leverage stages so that this time you spend on stage can give you more freedom and flexibility off stage. So that's my crossroads. And that was the rebrand of my podcast that happened in January. Yeah, this is so good. I love hint of hustle. Like whenever she, she told me about it, I was like, Oh my God, it was like the sparks flew. I was like, yes, this is exactly what it should be. I love it so much because I think it, it is the perfect cross section for 
what you do in your business, but also the people that you serve. Like I have just seen explosive, massive success with the people that you serve. And and it's funny, you know, because you say success or I say success and it's relative, right? It's all relative based on the type of person because some people are looking for landing on those huge stages like me. Like I was so excited to be asked to speak on podcast movement. I'm like, heck yeah, like, this is incredible. But then there's other people that are like, I spoke to a hundred people that are all my exact ideal audience. And other people that are like, I spoke on stage without wetting my pants, you know, without sweating through my shirt. Like I did all these things. So I think that success is relative depending on who you ask. But what I love so much is you do a really incredible job of putting a formula to things. So actually this like segues perfectly into the different pieces of a magnetic talk. This was a concept that I learned from you. Again, I'm giving you all the praise and shout outs in today's episode, but I want you to talk about it because um, one thing that you said to me recently was too many people over teach in their content. And when you said that, I was like, oh, hang on, hit pause. That is the majority of this audience. The people that are listening right now that are watching on YouTube, they are serving so much on a silver platter and then saying, but why is nobody buying any of my stuff? Like, I thought this was all really, really good. So can you speak to that? Yeah. Well, we can, we can do it like five episodes just on. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Let's talk about this idea of what is a magnetic talk and what goes into it. So I mentioned before that my background was prior to starting my business, I was an executive in a company. And that role that I had, my job was booking speakers. As I mentioned, my friend Kendra before I hired her to speak at my conferences, I was responsible for the event budget. And then also as an executive, I was responsible for the results that event had on the businesses we served. So I saw the financials of how much did it spend to us create an event that had speakers at it. And then what was the financial result of that event for the clients who came? So it was a really interesting perspective. My role was the vice president of learning development. I was responsible for all the training of the people who attended these conferences. Here's why this matters. What a lot of people do is they're so focused on the stage being the destination. They show Mm -hmm. up on stage, they wow people's socks off, they get the praise, they get the claps, they're like, whoa, it was so wonderful. And then we all know what it's like to go to a, even like a Tony Robbins conference, something where you're like, I'm so lit up and inspired. Then we all go back to our normal lives and normal habits set in. Other things come in, the things that we thought we were going to do, maybe we do a couple of them and then we usually forget pretty quickly. That's typically the issue people have with personal development conferences is it's great to feel great in a moment, but does it have lasting change? It really depends on how well you were trained at the conference to rewire how you approach the specific thing you're trying to approach. So back when I was uh, doing the events and, and running my old team, I got really curious of saying, why was it that some conferences had really big results and others didn't really have any impact on the bottom line. And I became really curious when I was on stage leading sessions, I wanted to know, depending on the topics I taught and how I taught, what was the impact of those talks on the businesses in the room? And when I got really curious and saying, how can I actually help these people get better results? I was able to put my ego aside and say, instead of what stories do I want to tell? Ooh, what would be fun to do here? What if I tried this? I started asking, what is their block when they leave? Why aren't they putting that into action? I got really curious around the behaviors that were changing after my events. And what stemmed from that is completely transforming how I taught from the stage. Mm -hmm. And this is what birthed my now what I call the magnetic talk formula, which pulls in this idea around every time you give a talk, there is a reason why you're on stage to speak. It all starts with having a strategy and a purpose. So there's four things of the magnetic talk formula. We're diving into number one. So point number one, ingredient number one is strategy. And what this stands for is even if you're recording, let's go back to your example earlier, a solo podcast episode, you turning on the microphone, there's a reason why you're hitting record. What is the purpose of this episode? What are you trying to do with the podcast in general? Or for you this week at Podcast Movement, what's your goal for the talk? 
And if you're a business owner, those goals are going to come down to one of four things. You're either trying to get paid to speak, i.e. you booked a gig and they're paying you a fee to be there, or you're trying to grow your programs. Maybe you have digital courses or you sell coaching. You're trying to get in front of more people to ultimately sell your services because that's how you make money. Goal number three would be, I'm just trying to get out there to increase my audience, whether that's more subscribers to your podcast, more names on your email list, a larger following on social media. Or number four is, y'all, I'm just out here trying to grow my authority. I just want to be here to be the person that others look to. I want to be on that stage because it's going to transfer some credibility currency and make me look more legit. That Those are the four. Those are the reasons why we speak. And as a business owner, when you step up to a microphone, you have to be clear, what is my goal here? And the resistance for people who focus more on education is they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to make this about me. I want to make it about the audience. I just want to serve. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, yes. And if you're a business owner, you run a business and you have to declare that you have to say, what is my goal? How am I going to monetize this eventually? Even if it's not in this exact talk, you need to understand how these things all go together. Because if we don't understand the purpose behind the mic moment we have, we can't really expect results from it. And the hard part is for a lot of entrepreneurs when they show up behind a microphone and then later they go, why is no one joining? Why is nobody hitting my launch? Why is nobody coming back to down, like download the podcast? Why are people leaving? It's like, well, was that your goal to begin with? Mm -hmm. And if, if not, we need to retool a few things, but we have to be clear on what our strategy is both for us, but also the strategic goal for our audience in the room too. I mentioned before, I got curious around what people were doing with my content. The same thing goes for you when you do a podcast episode. What's the purpose for them? What do you want them to do? What do you want them to think? What do you want them to feel? Everything that you do, you have to start with the purpose and the strategy behind that moment on stage. Yeah, this is this is so helpful. And I think that the one thing that made this easier for me, because in, in the beginning, like I can think back to the Genesis moment, like 2018, I'm starting my podcast. I was that person. I was just teaching and I was like, I don't want to sell. I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't really have anything to sell. So what am I, what is actually happening? There were no calls to action except for subscribe to the show. And I'm grateful that I had that, right? That little tidbit of like, okay, like this is, this is the thing that I do. Whereas now when I'm planning my content, like I've got it in my content calendar. Like we're going boom, boom, boom. Maybe we're talking about the same thing for four or five episodes in a row. Like this is part of the strategy for what I'm doing now. So I can tell you from someone that's done this, that if you have no strategy, you're going to hit those no goals a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> but if you start implementing that strategy, you will be so surprised how quickly people react to it right? You start seeing more signups on your email list. You start seeing people follow you on Instagram because you made that ask. And so I think people get a little nervous, a little shy, like, oh, I don't want to ask people to do something. But to your point, if you're trying to run a business and you're trying to generate sales, you're trying to generate revenue, but more importantly, you're trying to help people, you have to make those CTAs. You have to make those calls to action. So this was just a fantastic reminder. And I have to tell you, like everybody listening right now, Heather says y'all because of me. So I want to, I want to claim that I have to claim that now while we're here because she didn't say that as much before she met me. And now I have tainted her and she says y'all all the time. Yeah, she's I do. And um, they actually, it's pretty embarrassing reason why on that. So, you know, in 2020 where having different vocabulary and just being more mindful, right? Of what's coming out of your mouth, how you address people, what you talk about. The phrase you guys has always <laughs> irked me. It's always irked me because I'm like, dude, I'm not a guy. Like, what is that? So I've always actually said gals, which people yeah. make fun of me all the time. Cause I'd be like, Hey gals, uh, um, whatever. Right. But when I, when we started talking, I just adopted the y'all because it replaced the you guys. So that quite frankly is why I say y'all, because I don't want to say you guys, but there's not really another replacement. So y'all makes me so I'm, happy. I'm from Portland, Oregon. So uh, the y'all is not a thing. Uh, and it only happens when I am online. So evidently 
this is who we are. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It just, it makes me smile so much. So I just had to take credit for that. I'll give Heather all the credit for, you, you credit. know, the you improved, the improved speaking skills. Like that is all like on Heather, but I will claim the y'all. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is my thing. I will claim the y'all. Okay. I want to address, cause we, we wanted to go tactical today. So before yes. we go on the y'all loophole, you were talking about that juxtaposition between uh, making the bold ask Mm -hmm. And just really hammering this in when we talk about having your specific business strategy, and then also thinking about what your person wants, I think we really have to lean into this idea that those two things go together. I think when mm -hmm. someone's focused on, I just want to serve, I just want to educate inherently, there is this uh, resistance in our thinking that like, oh, if I sell, if I offer my freebie, if I talk about my program, then I'm being icky. Like, mm -hmm. or then I'm like, oh, then they're going to be like, oh, she's just in it for herself. When really how things work when you're growing an audience is it's constantly a win-win. There's mm -hmm. something that they want. And there's something that you have and your thing can help them get what they want. You are not the thing that they want. Let's just be real clear, y'all. Egos aside, you and your program is not the thing that they want. What your program does and what you talk about and what you bring to the world helps them get what they want. Mm -hmm. They are the hero in their own story. You are just that person being able to throw stuff out there. It's not about you saying the right thing. It's not about you being the solution. It's not about you being the guru. It's about your audience getting what they want and them being their own freaking champion. So what we have to think about is when we talk about things on our podcast or we talk about our freebies, you throwing that out them, you're giving them an additional tool for them to go further. You have to get good at how do you talk about that tool. One of my, I'm totally going to drop my tool right here because it's appropriate. Uh, that thing right there, but Heather, what do I say? Like, how do I actually say the dang thing around my freebie without sounding schmucky? I don't know if you've ever had this moment where you're like teaching, teaching, and then you're like, and I have this free guide. <laughs> That's awkward, right? How do we transition into making that powerful? So if anyone's ever had that moment where you have either you want people to subscribe to your show at the end of an interview or you have a freebie, I have a free guide. It's 19 magnetic phrases that literally are the phrases to use in that transition from teaching into the ask. So we can put those in the show notes. Yeah, I've had this freebie around for like a year and a half and it's my most popular one, but it's like, but tell me what do I say? So it's positioned for them and not for me as the educator. So I'm just going to, I'll tout that all day long, baby. Go grab that guide. Well, I'll you not sound schmucky. So I didn't, this is like, this is like woo, breaking news alert. I actually looked at that because I have, I went and grabbed this freebie, like when you first put it out and I was like, I need that for my talk because I was trying to think, because that's the big thing, right? For this conference. If no one's ever, if you're listening, you've never speaking or spoken, spoke, you know what I'm trying to say. See, <laughs> word flub in action. Words are so hard. <laughs> <laughs> like people, like they say flat out, you cannot promote on stage. Like that's not what this stage is about. And so I thought, okay, how can I talk about what I do with authority and all the things? And I was kind of at a loss whenever I was working out my outline. And I was like, ah, Heather has all the answers for speaking. Yeah. So I pulled out this freebie and I was like, oh, there were like four phrases in there immediately that jumped off the page at me. And I was like, this is appropriate. Even though it's me, you know, kind of hinting at what I do and, you know, the audience that I serve, it's not crossing that line of being salesy or icky to an audience where I've been told, no, 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 you cannot be promotional. You can't do this. But it's a way of establishing that authority. And it's funny because Heather, and we haven't really talked about this too much, but I feel more confident whenever I talk about the experience that I've had helping other people. Like it makes my message feel so much stronger than yeah. if I were just to stand on stage and say, here's the five tips that you need to know to make your podcast incredible. Like, yeah. that's great. I could put that in a blog post and put it on my website. Awesome. Okay. But when I'm on stage, I'm like, oh, oh okay. Here's the, here's the example that comes to mind. Y'all, I don't know if high school was a positive or a traumatic experience <laughs> for you. So take this with a grain of salt. Uh, maybe just dating. Let's talk about dating in general. You know how there's this element in dating that when you are like leaning in and you want it so hard, there's this like desperation factor and it is the biggest turnoff ever. It's like, no, no, you can't like, you can't want it so much. But if you mm -hmm. lean back in your confidence and you're like, I don't need you. There's just something sexy about that. Something like, Ooh, that's desirable. 
The same thing happens in our content. So what happens, the reason why all those conferences are like no pitching, no promotion is because the way that people have been trained to teach and promote, it's it's like this desperate for selling of yes. like, here's all these things, right? And it feels gross for everyone. And here's the thing. I say it feels gross. It works. Being very clear with here's my thing and being very um, pushy. I, we could use that word with it. Like direct is another way to put it. It works. But there are there's a more nuanced way to do it that can be just as effective, whether or not you're allowed to promote on stage or not. So just as a side caveat for those of you who do do speaking, there are different levels of pitching. Some of them are a direct pitch. Some of them are going to be a soft pitch. Some are a indirect pitch. What Crystal's talking about here is there is a no pitch rule at this conference, which is very common if you get a spot to speak at a workshop at a conference. What we do in that scenario is we use what I call credibility amplifiers. Mm -hmm. And it's ways to talk about your work, talk about your experience, talk about your offers without talking about your offers. And those credibility amplifiers are in that freebie. So you totally steal all that. So favorite thing ever. I'm just so glad somebody's using them. Like, <laughs> yes, I'm using it. I'm using it. It's getting put into action this week. Like I'll have to, um, my husband's actually going. So I'm going to have to like, like make him like, okay, I already told him. I was like, you're going to have to sit in the front. He said he was going to try to sneak in the back. And I was like, no, you have to sit up. You have to record me. You have to yeah. be the one that has the social proof of that I was on stage. So you're sitting in the front. So I'll have him record it and be like, oh, look, Heather, I'm such a like straight A student. Like here, like this is where I put the magnetic phrase in in this exact position. Okay, <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold <laughs> on, y'all. I, I uh, lovingly yell at my clients all the time, and I say there are no straight A students. There is no gold <laughs> passport stamp or trophy. I do not care if people do it right. I care that they get the results they're after. Mm, so for right. you, my goal for you is that you walk off that stage and go, that was incredible. I felt confident you have people praising you and following you, right? But that is an authority building talk. That was strategy number four that I mentioned. That is the goal, right? Is to be able to have your name with that logo. That is a huge credibility amplifier as a podcaster and an authority in the podcasting space. So my goal for you is for you to realize your goals you can leverage my stuff, right? But there's no gold stars, people. <laughs> Whatever. I'm thinking of, and I'm going to say this because Heather knows friends so well, and we have this mutual connection of friends. I feel like I'm Monica crafting my own like tinfoil star and I'm handing it to you and saying, here, hand this to me. Just tell me I did a good job. Tell me I got an A. That's where we are. <laughs> yeah. And then Joey just slapped it down and says, Joey doesn't share food. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We could continue this conversation for like, like you said, five more episodes, but I really want to transition into, you have some really fun stuff coming up and I want you to talk about it because like I said, we've already talked about how much Heather has impacted my speaking, getting on stages. She helped me y'all. I, I know I've name dropped Heather so many times whenever I got on Dave Ramsey stage, which was incredible. Heather helped me prepare for that. I've spoken on Amy Porterfield's momentum stage. And every time I get into a situation where I'm on this type of stage, I go back to Heather's story worksheets that she's helped me build. I go back to templates that she's helped me organize. But more importantly, I go back to the messages that you've shared with me that are some tough love, because that's what I love about your teaching. It's no fluff. It's no BS. And it's very straight to the heart of helping you become better. So this is another, like, I'm just giving you a little compliment sandwich in there too, I but I want you, I want you to talk day. about it. This is so great. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's okay. I maybe not maybe not a lot of fluff, but there's definitely a lot of random metaphors and side tangents. That is my teaching style for sure. But let's uh okay, let's let's come back to you mentioned the magnetic talk formula. I only gave you all one ingredient, so let me round out the other ones because it goes right with what you're talking about. <clears throat> When you show up on stage, right, it all comes back to starting with that goal around what you want to do. But the thing that really makes you stand out, to makes you become more memorable, to get to that point where like Crystal being asked to speak at conferences that you've had on your dream board, being asked or being able to get a apply or pitch and get to other conferences or speak at Dame for MZ or, or show up on your own podcast consistently, right? Get the downloads you want, whatever the goal is that you set up. 
the way that people keep coming back, the way that people start seeing you as their go-to person. That's the goal, right? It's not about becoming like the planet's go-to person is you have a, you have a certain person that you can help a certain person that you love working with that, you know, you can help. How do you become the person for them? I call that like authority status. There's the rest of the equation is you have to know how to structure what it is that you talk about. And it can't just be in how to and teaching. There's a structure Mm -hmm. because when you show up and speak, you have to put on the hat of a marketer. Oh, something that not everybody loves. But what I mean by that is it's your responsibility to market your expertise. And I don't just mean marketing your business. I mean, whatever idea it is that you're teaching, it doesn't matter how logical it is, or even if people are Googling, how do I create a solo podcast episode? It's not just about answering the question, how do I create a solo podcast episode? There are, there's context that you have to create for your audience. So that way, when they end the episode and go back to their computer and their life, and they meet the obstacles that will happen. Remember earlier, I mentioned you have to give them the tools for them to be the hero. Part of that is learning how to structure your message in a better way to set them up to succeed. So knowing how to structure really effective presentations, that's, that's point number two. Number three is what Crystal does really, really well is using stories and metaphors to pull people in and put personality into it. There's also a strategy behind storytelling is it makes you more likable and it allows people to retain the information better and longer. Uh, And then the fourth piece, which I think is my favorite, it's the style that you bring. It's how you tell your stories. It's how you carry yourself on stage. If you're like me, it's the fact that you allow yourself to be quirky and weird and admit embarrassing things or have word flubs and then laugh about them. That's different than somebody who gets on stage and wants to be way more polished and speak a little softer and be a little more, I don't know, whatever you call it. That's not me, right? So we all have different personalities we bring and it comes out through how we communicate, through our body language, uh, through what random facts we tell. And so when we pull those things together, the strategy, the structure, the story and the unique style, that's how you truly start becoming magnetic on stage. And magnetism allows you to attract that perfect person. So answering your question, um, we have some fun things going on. I am doing something super fun, which you're loving this because it has to do with podcasting. I just recorded and I'm releasing, by the time this episode airs, it will be out a private podcast series. And it's a limited time series, but called Becoming the Known Authority. It's a secret podcast. You can only get access to it if you register for the event. It's totally free. Uh, But I'm teaching entrepreneurs, specifically ones who have podcasts, who have courses, maybe coaches, consultants. I'm teaching you how you leverage speaking, whether it's on your own platforms or guesting on others, how you leverage speaking using those four elements of the Magnetic Talk Formula to position yourself as the go-to authority for your perfect person. And it's happening through a, just a multi-series or a multi-episode podcast series, but that's happening now. And I'm I'm just very excited about trying something new. The private podcast is a new thing I'm doing. (laughs) Yes. I'm so excited about this because private podcasts are one of those things that whenever they first came on the scene, I guess probably around two years ago, it was one of those like mysterious things like, that just sounds so hard and complicated. And I love that people are doing it because it's not hard. It's not complicated. And it's actually one of those things. It's like, it's only around for a little bit. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I just, I, I love this so much and you do such a great job in helping people in this very specific way, going back to the magnetic formula and everything. So I'm just, I'm so excited. So everybody listening, it's going to be in the show notes. We're going to have links to everything, but Heather, I want to wrap this up and put a nice little bow on today's conversation and ask you my three rapid fire questions that I've asked you before. So I'm curious if your no, answers are going to change. Instantly, instantly, I'm sweating. I'm like, oh, yes. what did I say last time? I don't yes. remember the question. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter I'm because I'm what you said last time <laughs> could be different than this time, or it could be the same. Okay. We're just, we're going to go with it. Okay. Rapid fire. Ready? Go. What advice would you give to a brand new podcaster? It sounded like you're going to keep going with that question. That was it. I was going to say, I was going to say content creator too, but I'm like, let's just stop at podcaster. Advice number one, if it's a question, end with an uptick. (laughs) 
Oh my gosh. I couldn't help myself. That's a speaking coach in me. Okay. So <laughs> new to a new podcaster. Okay. I uh, don't listen back to your first few episodes. Mm, mm-hmm. And I say this because as a coach, I tell people to listen to their episodes, but the first few do not just record and move on. And then about three to five episodes in, then put on your courage pants and then watch or listen so that you can get better. But the fir- just get started and start faster than you think you should. That's great. Okay. What is a dream podcast you want to be on? And who's your dream podcast guest? Oh, you know who I'm podcast crushing these days is uh, Ed Milet. Okay. I would love to be on the Ed Milet show. He is like, he's a giant, like, teddy bear who looks like he also could be on the sons of anarchy which is a little hot let's be honest (laughs) (laughs) so i love i'm a huge fan i've been a fan of ed milet for years so that would be that would be great um as a guest on my show i'd love to have him on the show but another person i would love to have on my show is brendan bruchard he's Mm -hmm. one of my mentors i've been in his coaching programs but specifically a lot of people don't know this about ben brendan he is a he's really geeky about public speaking skills. And I would love to geek out with him around the science and the strategy behind how he speaks on stages. His seminars are next level. And I would just love to, uh, to like get it on that understanding. (laughs) Yeah, no, he's fantastic. So I totally agree with that. Okay. My last one is, do you consider yourself a perfectionist? No, not even a little bit. I probably used to, I used to. But I, I do things messy. And in fact, I adopt the belief that if it's, well, one perfect doesn't exist. It's just not a thing. So that's a delusion. But if I am not making mistakes, I'm actually not doing big enough things. Mm -hmm. But if I'm, if I'm trying to make it perfect, I'm waiting far too long. And I am a huge fan of delivering the, I'll edit myself, crappy rough draft is one of the mantras we use all the time with my clients and programs is you just have to get the first version out, then you can make it better. So perfectionism goes against one of my core values, which is making progress. Oh my gosh, this was, this was so good. And I think that you've given so many gifts today. You've been so generous with all of your teachings and I just, I love you so much. I'm so glad that we had this chance to catch up and we're going to meet in person. Like, I feel like we should start like, like a fund that's like, okay, this is where we're going to go. Like, this is Crystal and Heather getting plane tickets. They're going to meet. I thought you meant for a moment like a crowd, a crowd fund. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't like, please me. help us pay for our meeting in person. No, we can pay Our, for our <laughs> workshop retreat. We're going to Hawaii. We desperately need your help. <laughs> no. <laughs> That also will be in the show notes. So. Yes, yes, exactly. We'll link to that. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. No, we just we just have to get together. I have to hug you, embrace you, and I just I'm so grateful that our paths crossed when they did because I have learned so many things from you on a professional level, on a personal level, and I'm just grateful to have you here on the show again today because I know somebody is walking away from this and they're like, "Damn, that Heather Sager chick, like." She's good. She's good. So she I don't think that or wow, she talks really fast and she has a lot of random tangents. Either way, <laughs> I'm good with either. Both are my brand. Uh, I appreciate you so much, Crystal. Your audience is so lucky. They get to experience really great speaking like every single week. You're always so great with storytelling and how you show up for your people. So if y'all want to learn how to be like as charismatic and uh, service oriented as Crystal, like keep listening to her show. She's just amazing. So thanks. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. Last thing, give everybody uh, like, where can we hang out with you on Instagram? I've talked about your reels. I love your reels. I think you do incredible stuff. So tell us, tell us where they can find you. I laugh at that because they're just cringy. Like they're just so cringy, but that goes with the whole idea. of I know they're cringy and I'm doing it anyways, because I'm trying to figure out how to do it. So if you want to laugh with me on Instagram, uh, that's the great place. I'm at the Heather Sager, but the best place to go to learn more about working together or listening to my podcast, podcast or all the things. If you head on over to heathersager.com, you can get the links to all the things and all the latest happenings. Yeah. And we're going to have her magnetic phrases, everything listed in the show notes. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, Heather. Bye friends. Every time I talk to Heather, I feel like I have 
an aha moment. (laughs) And it could be for me personally, it could be for my business, it could be for you, this audience. And I just knew, I was like, you have to come back on the show and talk about this. Anytime she shares a story or she shares an example, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is my people too. Like this is exactly what they're going through. So I know her message really resonated with someone today. And I hope that you reach out, start following Heather. Please go grab her magnetic phrases PDF. Like it is so, so good. It's so simple and it's beautiful. I mean, come on. Like, I mean, I don't know if you're a sucker for a sexy PDF, but oh my gosh, it's so cute. But the thing is, is that it works. It is very, very powerful. And the things that are in there can help you when you're creating a promotional podcast episode and you're like, I don't really know how to transition from just talking about the thing I wanted to cover today into inviting them to my webinar or having them sign up and join us in our boot camp or Facebook group or whatever it is that you're trying to get them to do. This is something that can absolutely help you build authority and help you really establish yourself as someone in your industry worth listening to. So go check that out. I'm going to link to everything in the show notes and go sign up for Heather's free podcast, um, the private podcast, because I think this is super fun. It is only limited time. So if you're listening to this in real time, make sure you go grab it. And that's all I have for you today. So make sure you're subscribed or following the podcast wherever you are listening. And I would love it if you would take a screenshot and tag me, tag Heather, share it on your Instagram stories, and let us know what you thought about today's episode. But that's all I have for you today. So as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.